Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If it is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin. I make content that is mainly fashion and beauty focused, sort of money focused as well in a way because I am currently trying to spend a lot less than I used to on fashion and beauty and get more into the habit of making the most out of the items that I own. So today's video is my inventory update for the last two months. So going through what I have brought in, what I have decluttered and what I have finished up, seeing where that leaves me with the numbers and monitoring that is part of my process of trying to take control of the results of some overspending that I did a few years ago that I am kind of still dealing with the fallout of. So if you like content that is about consuming in a conscious way and trying to use what you have and not always focusing on buying in what is new just because it's new, then please do consider hitting the subscribe button. That would really, really help me out. Before we get into it, I just need to put out an apology as well. I said in the month of March I was going to put up a video every Wednesday and Sunday, but I actually missed the last two. So I was in France last week, we get caught up in the French air strikes on the way back so we didn't get back until super super late in the Sunday night so I did not get the the time that I thought I would have had on the Sunday to get Sunday's video edited and uploaded and I've just been a zombie all week. I really can't cope with like that kind of disruption to my sleeping pattern because I was right back to work on Monday and I've just not been functioning so we missed the last two so I do apologise for that. April's quite a busy month for me so for the month of April it'll be back to Sunday videos only. This is the first Sunday in April and we're going to see where my inventory is sitting so let's get into it. Let's start with makeup and I do have a few additions to my inventory. This video is covering additions, declutters, and empties from the months of February and March. I did do an inventory update at the end of January. The figures will kind of take us to the end of quarter one, just to be clear about that. But getting into makeup, I do have some additions. So if you watched a few weeks ago, I put up my MAC lipstick declutter and I was explaining that I was doing that because the Back to Mac scheme was ending. I ended up, I took 18 items back to Mac between some of the lipsticks that I decluttered and some empties that I had and some previous declutters that I'd had that I'd been keeping specifically with the intention of taking them back to Mac at some point that I obviously hadn't gotten round to until like the very last minute when the scheme was ending. But I got in there and I got three lipsticks. So although these are added into my inventory, they didn't actually cost me anything because I got them through the back to Mac scheme. First one is the one that I'm wearing just now. So this is Chili. So this is one of the ones that I had this in my collection. It was quite old. I actually didn't really realise just how dried out it was until I got this one, this is what I'm wearing today and although this is a matte lipstick it is so so creamy particularly in comparison to the chilli that I took back to exchange for a new one so yeah I hadn't really realised just how dry that one had become because obviously it does it gradually so comparing that to a brand new one feels a bit mad but um, yeah this is what I've got on just now and I absolutely love this, absolute classic. In terms of the other two I did a second exchange for a new Sin, so Sin was another one that I had already, it wasn't quite off but it was turning, it was going there so I decided to declutter my existing Sin and replace it with a shiny new one. What I will do is insert a cutaway of me wearing Sin so that you can see what it looks like on the lips. And then the third one that I went for is Morange. So I was debating getting Dubonnet, which was one that I had gotten rid of my old one of, um, and I was thinking about just replacing it. So I was thinking about doing the Back to Max all to just bring in new versions of colours that I already had had that had gone off that I was decluttering. But I decided I have quite a lot of Dubonnet style colours in my collection, even if not within my MAC collection, which I definitely kind of do. Uh, in my wider lipstick collection so I decided to go for a different colour and I went for Morange. Lots of you in the comments of that video encouraged me to go for the one that I was really excited about which was this one. So it's a really bright orange, not necessarily the most flattering for the teeth but I think for summer this will be a beautiful shade so I'm really really excited to have added this to my collection.
and I also have another two editions two little samples I got these at MAC when I was doing my lipstick exchange and this is their new foundation I can't quite remember the name of it but it's the one that's in like a clicky pen so I've got two samples here one of NW13 and one of NW15 so I am wearing NW13 right now I've only just put this makeup on ahead of starting to film and this is the first time that I've used it so I'm not going to kind of report back at anything at the moment but first impressions are that I really really like the foundation and I've got loads of foundations to use um, and I've got one in my project pan. I did put up my project pan intro last month so I will link that up in the eye if you missed that and I think next Sunday's video will be the first update to my 2023 project pan but there is a foundation in that as you'll know if you watch the intro and I have quite a lot of foundations on my inventory in general so I wouldn't be making a purchase of the full size of either of these anytime soon but I was really interested in new foundation in general and I really like new brush that's with it. There's not been many foundation launches that I've been particularly interested in. I really like the Guerlain Poirot Gold Matte. I have a couple of samples of that in my collection and I would definitely be tempted to buy a full size of that at some point when I have finished some of my existing ones and my first impressions of this one are pretty good. I'll see how it wears and whatever I'll maybe report back in another video so it won't be happening anytime soon but I feel like initial initial impressions are that I do like this and I haven't really been excited by a foundation launch in quite a long time so that was quite a nice feeling. I feel like for the last few years because I have been so about trying to stop bringing stuff in and to use stuff up I've almost kind of lost the excitement of makeup launches because I've been so trying to put some like serious sort of distance between me and makeup launches because I was always getting sucked up in them, always buying into the hype and buying far more than I could ever wear or use. So yeah, I feel like this is the first foundation launch in quite a long time that I've actually been like, hmm, interest has peaked. So, so that was quite a nice feeling to know that I can still be interested and excited, but also to know that I can still be interested and excited without having to buy the thing. Like I'm quite happy to have got the samples be figuring out if I like it and to maybe earmark it for a future purchase so feeling quite good about that development in my feelings about new launches. For the numbers that gave me five additions to my makeup inventory this month or these last few months worth a total of $76. The lipsticks were worth $22 each and I've counted the samples as being worth $5 each because I have no real idea how much is in them mill wise or anything so I've just called them a fiver thought that was the simplest thing. Then in terms of makeup empties I will insert that just now. I have two empties. So first of all is the Makeup Forever HD powder. If you've been with me for a long time you'll know this was in my first ever project pan back in 2018 I think. So yeah you can see there's some markings in the bottom so I've been trying to finish this for a very long time and I'm glad that it's finally done. A powder for filming and obviously I make YouTube videos but I don't really need a powder just for putting in my face for filming YouTube videos so I'm not going to go out of my way to repurchase this one. This I totally would have repurchased but it's a Becca one so I can't repurchase it anymore. So this was called the Hydra Mist Setting Powder and it was just a loose powder but it was a really really nice one in the skin. It just didn't emphasize any texture or anything. I would definitely have been tempted to get a full size of this if I would used it more quickly when Becca was still available to purchase but it's not anymore so... There will be no repurchases of either of these two products. So two items worth $41.85 used up. And then in terms of my makeup declutters, if you watch my MAC lipstick declutter video, you will know I had quite a few, I think I had 12 at the end of the video. But what I've actually counted off my inventory just now is eight worth $132.50. So the reason for that, because I had other empties, I didn't need all the lipsticks that I had decluttered to do the exchange with. So I did the exchange with the empties I already had, plus some of the lipsticks that I had decluttered. So I've counted the ones that I've actually passed back to MAC off of my inventory. The other ones are still sitting on my windowsill. So they are obviously the shades that I was least keen to declutter. So whether I will reclutter them remains to be seen or I might go through with decluttering them but I'm not going to take them off my inventory until I have physically you know passed them on to somebody else. So I'm only counting eight off my inventory, eight lipsticks worth $132.50. So in terms of the overview I opened my makeup inventory at the start of 2023 with a value of $14,799.56. I have added in $76 worth of items all year so those are the first additions to the makeup category. 
I have used up 4185 again didn't have any makeup used up in the month of January when I did my last video and I have decluttered $132.50 worth of lipstick so that gives me a total value of $14,701.21 so a little bit of a reduction there. In terms of quantity, it opened at 605 items. I have added five, I have used two, and I've decluttered eight. So that gives me a total of 600. So I am really pleased that that has gone down to the 600 and I feel like one more makeup empty will get me into the five somethings. Like one more would get me 599. I know that's not a huge reduction from 600, but I feel like we're inching closer to the 500 bracket. So really really pleased with that. Makeup is obviously the thing that takes the longest to use up. I move through it the most slowly. It's probably also the thing that I am most excited by or that there's most variety in so like it's the thing that I own the most of. So yeah it's not something that I think I'll see go down super rapidly anyway. For the last three months I feel like my skin has just kind of had one period after another of being not great and being really irritated so I've not been wearing as much makeup over the last three months as I maybe could have been wearing to get rid of more stuff or to be getting closer to finishing up more stuff but I'm on the medicated skincare at the moment so hopefully that will take me back to kind of normal. I've finally kind of given in trying to sort it myself and been to a doctor. Got eczema cream and hopefully that will sort me out a little bit and hopefully then maybe my makeup wearing will increase over the next couple of months and there will be if not more used up because it takes so long to use up more products then like more declutters which I think is really what I'm aiming for this year. Let's do perfume next. I don't have any additions to my perfume category so let me insert my empties for you. So I finished the Acampora Musk Gold. This was worth $14.25 and then I also finished up my little vial of the Guerlain Oud Coal which I counted as being worth $5. In total that's two products worth $19.25. I didn't dislike either of these. I actually really quite liked the Guerlain Oud Coal but it's a 400 and something pound price point and I don't don't think I liked it quite that much to be honest. Other ones in the range that I think I would purchase before I would purchase that one if I was in the market for spending that kind of money. So two products worth $19.25 have been used up in my perfume category and I actually have a perfume declutter. What I'm decluttering is this from Davines. It's actually a solid perfume um, so it's one item that I'm decluttering worth $18. The reason that I am decluttering it is just basically because it is a solid perfume I do not gravitate towards solid perfumes. I do love the idea of like solid perfume jewellery, so like brooches or whatever that have a perfume palette in them. So they were something that was quite popular in the past, they're not as common at the moment. I know Diptyque do a few of them, but I don't think they do any of the perfumes that I really like from Diptyque in the palettes. It's um, pretty much their sort of best sellers and they're all very floral and not really particularly up my street. So I don't think I'll be buying any Diptyque ones, but yeah, I, I would possibly buy solid perfume jewellery, but that solid perfume has been in my collection for donkey's years. I never reach for it. I don't, I don't think it's a very nice, as silly as this sounds, I don't think putting solid perfume on is as nice a sort of ritual as spraying yourself with perfume. That maybe sounds a bit mad, but it is what it is. Like, I just, I don't gravitate towards it. I'm never going to use it. So it's just time to admit that and move it out of my collection. In terms of my perfume, collection started this year worth $4,772.87. I added in $14.25. That was in the month of January. I have used up $31.75 worth of perfume and I have decluttered that one perfume worth $18. So that brings my perfume inventory down to being worth $4,737.37. In terms of the quantity of my perfume, I started with 47 this year. I added one, have used up three and decluttered one. So that takes my perfume inventory to a total of 44. So I don't have big goals for my perfumes this year. I panned a lot last year. I just want to be rotating through them this year. I do have one in my project pan, but that is very full at the moment. So hopefully we'll empty it by the end of the year within the project, but that's the only real goal that I've set this year in terms of using a perfume up. So as long as my perfume inventory doesn't increase this year, I'm happy with that. So let's move on to skincare. So I do have a couple of additions to my skincare inventory. First of all, I have two sachet samples worth $2. Because my skin has been super irritated when I was in France last week, 
um, I bought this which is an eye cream it's a French pharmacy brand called SVR and it's supposed to be a soothing cream for anti-itching and irritated eyelids so it's my eyebrows and my eyelids that are really really flared up at the moment with my eczema it happened at the kind of I wasn't well in January so my skin was really dried out in January but it was just dried out and dehydrated it and it was kind of sore from that point of view but it wasn't eczema it wasn't kind of like properly irritated in that sense but just before I went to Dublin at the end of February um, I think I brought it on myself I was bleaching my eyebrows a bit of the bleach fell from like here to here and I did wipe it but obviously I'd put too much on and it had it had fallen and I think probably that's what kind of caused the irritation in the first place having said that this eye has now also decided to flare up so I don't know maybe it was nothing to do with the bleach I've had my eyebrows bleached plenty of times now so I know it's not I'm not allergic to the bleach but obviously it's usually on the brow so it wasn't really meant to touch the skin I feel like that's what started it just before I went to Dublin but as I say this eye has now gone as well so I saw this in the French pharmacy and I bought it because I thought you know anti-itching irritated eyelids sounds exactly what I need but having used it a couple of times I feel like I have woken up with my eyes even more crusty and irritated than they have been before I had used this so I have now stopped using it and as I said at the start of the video I have been to the doctor because you can't get anything over the counter when it's your eyes I have been to the doctor now got some medicated cream so hopefully that will sort me out I feel like I'm already seeing an improvement probably put it two steps back today by putting a bit of eyeliner on I have not been wearing a lot of makeup at all particularly around my eyes because that does just make it worse but obviously I don't want to film with no makeup on so we'll see what I look like later on today after I take this off but hopefully I'm on the right road and I'll maybe be able to revisit this once I'm kind of properly healed up um, but yeah at the moment it seems to be making things worse rather than better but I'm hoping that is just because my eyelids are already irritated and nothing non-medical is helping with that and that once they're back to being normal I'll be able to use this and actually think it's quite good. Fingers crossed. That was nine euros so I've just counted it as being worth ten dollars so that's added ten dollars into my inventory and another item. And then the last additions to discuss for skincare. If you have watched my beauty we have plans for 2023 you have seen this box already so this was actually sent to me in PR from L'Occitane I feel like really really lucky to have been sent this because I know I'm obviously not the biggest YouTuber and I feel like because a lot of my content now is about trying to buy less it's just maybe doesn't kind of fit with what a lot of brands are still trying to do even in 2023 when we all know that overconsumption is a huge problem you know for the planet as well as for individuals it is what it is obviously what's the word that was used in that TikTok thing? Um, shoppertainment. Shoppertainment is, you know, still alive and well and that suits brands a lot better than somebody like me. So I feel very, very lucky to have been sent this. So as you can see, there are four products in this box. And what I said in that last video when I was talking about this was that when I get PR, what I want to do is test it out and then decide if I want to keep it or not so that I'm not just adding things to my inventory so regarding this so this is the L'Occitane lavender bath foam now I don't actually have a bath at home so I don't have much opportunity to use this however I do have a mini of this already and what I said was I was going to soak my feet using the mini and see if I liked it and found that that was a good way to use it and if it was I would maybe keep this. That was about a month ago that I filmed that video and I have not once yet done that and I think this is something that doing my project pan has really taught me is that I think I use more than I actually do particularly this project pan this year because I'm counting I'm tally marking on the back of my blush every time that I use it so I'm monitoring my use in even kind of more pinpoint away than I ever have done just doing project pans and looking at month to month what the visual progress is like I'm tally marking and counting how many times I use it and it's a product that I'm putting an emphasis on using so I should be using it more than than any other product in my collection and I'm seeing how little those numbers actually are versus what I kind of had estimated they would be. So I think the lesson I'm taking from that is that I use less than I think I do. I spend a lot less time doing beauty things than I think that I do. 
and if in the last month I have not found the time to soak my feet with the mini of this that I already own, it's clearly not something I'm going to start doing on the regular when I was actively thinking I need to try and do that at some point. So it's not something I'm doing already, it was something I was going to start doing. It is something I need to start doing, my strophetist has kind of advised me to start doing that, although she was saying soak them with salt rather than with the uh, lavender bath foam, but you know, I could put some salt in alongside the lavender bath foam. Uh, salt's for soaking things in, not just like salt. You know what I mean. Um, I am thinking about the fact that I'm supposed to start doing this. Have not yet started doing it. Clearly have not made it part of my routine. And even if I do make it part of my routine, I've got the mini of this and that's gonna last me probably far longer than I think it's going to last me. So on that note, I'm not gonna add this into my inventory. I am just going to pass this on to someone else. The other three things though, I am going to keep. So the first is the L'Occitane Almond Shower Oil. I love this. This is like, even if they hadn't sent it to me, I've said before in videos with ones that I've paid for myself, in terms of luxury, like indulgent bathing, this is where I'm comfortable at. So this is at the price point that it still feels indulgent. The product feels indulgent and beautiful on the skin, but it's not like having like my Gertland shower gel that I had in last year's Project Pan where I just felt a bit guilty about using it every single time and washing it down the drain like that. So this is where I am comfortable. This like luxury that I enjoy indulging in without feeling any guilt about indulging in. So I am keeping this and this is worth $29. I am also keeping the hand cream. Take it out of the box because it's just gonna rattle about. Also the packaging is lovely. How pretty is it? Like so, so pretty. Look at that illustration on the bottom. Really, really delicate and lovely. So this is the Immortel Serum in Cream hand cream. So it's a bit more expensive than a usual L'Occitane hand cream, but all L'Occitane hand creams are great. It's something they do extremely well with. This one is worth $38 for 75 mils. I'm definitely gonna keep that. You will probably see it in a future project pan. I do have, I think I've got a hand cream empty in this video or I had it in the last inventory update and then I have moved on. I'm trying to finish my This Works hand cream first before kind of getting into using this one properly. So. I won't be using it straight away. I'll finish my This Works one first and then I think we get a little 15ml one that I would just like to maybe knock out. But this will probably be in my 12 pans of Christmas or something this year. I think it is really, really lovely. So I'm very happy to keep that. I feel like because it is hand cream, I know I will use it up. I think that's the key about any kind of PR that I want to bring in this year, particularly with like skincare or whatever. I want to bring it in and know that I'm going to use it up and finish it in like, the sort of near future. I don't want to bring things in and just be creating a huge collection that will last me for 10 years because that's where I was back in 2018 when I started my beauty rehab and we're only just kind of coming out of that in terms of some of these inventories. So uh, yeah, hand cream I feel I definitely will finish up so I'm not worried about keeping that. And then the last product that I'm keeping is the Immortel Serum. And I haven't used this yet because my skin has been so irritated I just kind of stopped and didn't want to risk using anything but I do want to keep this and give it a shot. I felt like my month was up and I had to make a decision on these things if I was going to keep them or not and I've decided to keep this even though I haven't actually tested it out yet. Anyway, this is what it looks like out of the box and this is worth $65. So that is one more item that I'm adding in. And again, once my skin's kind of going back to normal, serum is something that I do absolutely move through. So I expect to have this in an empties before the end of the year. So those are all my additions. So in total, that is six products and they are worth $144. And now I'm going to insert my skincare empties. For skincare, I have 15 empties worth $259.30. I don't want to bore you too much, but I will just draw attention as always to the Patchology Illuminating Sheet Mask. This is one of my absolute favourite sheet masks. I really, really rate it. I think it's £40 for a box of five, so it's not a super, super cheap one, but it's much more affordable than the Sarah Chapman Skinesis one next to it, which I hate to say because it is an expensive one, but also really, really rate this one. In terms of anything else that I've used up, oh, my Clarins Eye Mask 
my eyes have been so so reactive at the moment and I am very very close to just repurchasing this even though I've got other masks and I'm kind of trying to stick to my rule of like you can't repurchase something when you've got equivalent sort of product but in terms of like right now when my eyes are irritated my eczema is all flared up this mask just really puts the moisture back in and it doesn't irritate them in the slightest which I can't really say about anything else that I own right now so very very tempted to repurchase that. I'm a bit gutted that's actually the Augusta Spader eye cream next to it which I'm glad to have used up because it was worth $40 so that's quite a, a good boost towards my total for that tiny little vial. I really love the Augusta Spader moisturiser sample that I had last year so I was so excited to use the eye cream but my eyes were just too irritated I think to get the benefit of it. Two sample sachets, one of them though is the Kiehl's Hydro Plump which I have the full size of. I really really rate this as a hydrating serum. And then I think the last thing I would say that I really liked from what I've used up here is this Kiehl's Avocado Mask. It's just a nourishing one but really really like that. My skin seemed to just drink that up. I don't have any skincare declutters so in terms of where we are now with skincare I opened 2023 with $5,155.79 worth of skincare. I have added in a total of $212.80. I have used up a total of $454.97 and I haven't decluttered any skincare. So that has taken my skincare inventory in total down to $4,913.62. So I feel quite happy about the way that that is moving down. As I said, I'm now onto the kind of medical skincare which I'm not putting into my inventory and taking out because it's very much a treatment that I'm using medically and then I'll go back to my normal skincare. So I feel like once my skin calms down, I will use quite a lot more skincare in the next few months than I have done in the last few months. I'm feeling pretty okay about where the skincare is in terms of value. Quantity wise, we opened with 206 items, added in 10, used up 22, and that takes me to a total for the end of quarter one of 194. So I'm pleased that we are under the 200 in terms of the quantity. And that takes me on to my last category, which is hair care. So I do have one addition for my hair care and it is a new dry shampoo worth $30. Talked about this in my February budget check-in so won't bore you too much with the, the story behind this but yeah, new dry shampoo, $30, one item added in. And then I will insert my hair care empties. Used up two products, one was this John Frieda full repair conditioner so as you can see this is a big massive one, I think it's 500 mils. I really like the fact that it had the, the pump dispenser. In terms of keeping my my product use and wastage to a minimum but it did mean that this took me absolutely ages to use i do really rate this full repair range though i would really recommend it the conditioner there was worth 25 dollars 96 i definitely would repurchase it at some point obviously i've got loads of conditioner now to use and i'm really pleased that this big huge one is out so that i can get onto the other one there's none at this kind of size so i definitely can move through a few more now that this one has been knocked out but i enjoyed using it and would get it again also finished up the jonathan van ness mask which was worth three dollars and 27 cents again i really enjoyed this i don't know if i would rush to buy it but i definitely would purchase it at some point in the future i felt like it put a good bit of moisture in my hair but didn't really weigh it down at anything so i did like it i don't know if i would rush for it but i wouldn't be you know if i got it again if i got any more samples or whatever which i think i might have another sample of this actually um i'd be perfectly happy to use it up and i don't have any hair care declutters something i do just want to address with hair care though because i feel like this is the kind of relevant place to talk about it even though it's not something that was in my inventory is that at the end of last year I started taking the hair burst vitamins that like all the YouTubers take and say are great. I started taking them at the very end of October so I was basically taking them through November, December and the first three weeks of January and then I got rid of them and I never put them on my inventory because I feel like like vitamins aren't really, I wasn't, you know, it's not really a thing in the same way that like having seven shampoos is. I'm not like hoarding vitamins, it's not a problem area so I wasn't putting it onto my inventory to take it off to talk to you guys about it in an empties video. I feel like when I was actually taking them, I wasn't really convinced that anything was happening. But see, since I've stopped taking them, I got my full fringe put in the week before Halloween. So my friend's wedding was on Halloween, which was I think a Monday. So I got my full fringe put in on the Saturday, not the one before Halloween, but the week before that. So say around the, the sort of 20, the early 20th, 
somethings and I felt like that fringe it was too short to start with so it needed to grow to a point where I actually wanted it to be and then it kind of grew past that point and it did that fairly quickly but my friend Lindsay who has a fringe permanently she says that her fringe always starts a little bit shorter than she'd like and usually within a week or two of leaving the hairdresser it's kind of where she wants it so I didn't really think too much about that fringe growth and then about halfway through February I got my hair cut and I got this side fringe put in so this is where it is and it is now April and this fringe is pretty much it's maybe about this much longer than it was when it was first put in it's really irritating me because so I changed my parting basically I went from a middle parting with a full fringe back to a side parting and what I want is to keep a bit of a fringe so that there's a bit of definition there but I want to be able to get it behind my ear and I thought based on the growth of my full fringe and how the way that that grew out and the fact I basically kind of had turned that into a side fringe by the time I got the side fringe officially put in anyway. So this was cut shorter from where that full fringe had grown to within the sort of three months that I was taking those hair vitamins. So this got cut in mid-February and it's now April and it's, it's barely moved. Sorry, I had to stop there whilst there was a whole load of noise going on outside with some lawn mowing. Uh, we're getting into that season, unfortunately. Essentially, I think those hair burst vitamins were doing a lot more than I was really giving them credit for. I actually, I got some in the French pharmacy. I got some phyto ones. So I'm trying them at the moment and I'm not going to buy the hair burst ones again until I've finished those ones. But yeah, I definitely, I feel like I've noticed it from stopping taking them more than I really was giving it credit for when I was taking them, enough that I have bought more. So I thought this was kind of the opportune moment to tell you guys about that. But finishing up in terms of the numbers, hair care, I opened 2023 with $1,407 worth of hair care. I have added in $30 worth of stuff. I have used up $46.23 worth of stuff and I haven't decluttered any. So that has taken my hair care inventory down to being worth $1,390.77. I've got quite a big goal on hair care this year. I want to get it down to under $1,000, but I feel like I am closing in on finishing quite a lot of products and I have chosen to concentrate on my more expensive products first. So although we've not seen a lot of movement in the first quarter, I'm still feeling like hitting that goal is going to be achievable. In terms of the quantities, so I started with 64 items of hair care, added one, have finished up three, that takes me to 62 items in my hair care inventory at the end of quarter one. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you next Sunday with my next one. Bye.